Opel has released exactly zero flagship smartphones for like four years. Instead, they were completely focused on mid-range selfie smartphones, it seems. But now, all of a sudden, they released the Oppo Find X, which is probably the most over-the-top, crazy flagship smartphone that not just Oppo, but basically any other company has released for years. The most expensive version of this costs 1,700 euros. Seems crazy, seems very much unlike what Oppo did until now, so let me explain what's going on. Two disclaimers here. One, I used to work for Oppo, so I obviously have a sort of soft spot in my heart for them. I think this is the most misunderstood phone company by geeks. Uh, and the second thing is that I'm just too pumped to get this video out to make any fancy animations or graphics, so not in this video. So I think there are no real doubts about the Oppo Find X being absolutely crazy, right? There are basically no bezels, which is crazy. Oppo actually folded the bottom of the screen under itself, like Apple did with the iPhone X, which is pretty crazy. The motorized camera pop-up thing is just all out crazy. And uh, the premium model actually charges with 50 watts, which is two and a half times as fast as even the fastest fast chargers on the market today. And you've guessed it, that is crazy. So this tech is called SuperVOOC. I demoed it myself about two years ago at MWC when it was still a prototype and seeing it come to an actual device is, is just fantastic. Now, I think that other than SuperVOOC maybe, uh, all the other crazy stuff isn't all that practical and useful and I don't think the average consumer should really spend a thousand euros or more for a device that you can probably not even put a case on. But that is kind of not the point of this phone. I mean, sure, Oppo would like to sell a few of these Find Xs, but I think sales figures are not the most important part of this story. To understand the Find X, we really have to pay attention to two things, the timing slash location of the event and the history of the Oppo Find series. The Find 5 and the Find 7 were the two innovative smartphones that actually put Oppo on the map as a high-tech company, right? They introduced things like a full HD screen to the smartphone market, or a notification light that had over 3,000 individual LEDs, and the world's first uh, fast charger in a smartphone back in 2014, and other things that we now take for granted. I mean, just a quick reminder, Dash Charge, which OnePlus geeks are still drooling over in 2018, is actually Opal technology from 2014 from the Find 7. That's what they called VOOC back then. And after two years of impressive tech innovation, the Find series simply disappeared because I think these were brand building devices. And once Oppo was seen as a legit company in the markets that were important to them, they could move on to money makers, the R series, the F series, which are much safer designs where Oppo could sell them in large quantities, but still with reasonable profits. Which brings us to the Find X. And once again, Oppo is trying to introduce itself to a whole new group of people, Europe. They launched this phone in Paris, in the Louvre, under that glass pyramid thing. And sure, Oppo has been to Europe before, kind of, but never really seriously. They never had offices here, they didn't go through carriers, no big retail partners, nothing. But this time, they're doing all of it. Offices, retailers, distribution, all of it. In a month or two from now, I would be surprised if half of Europe wasn't painted green with Oppo advertisements. And Oppo wants the crazy, over-the-top Find X to be the first thing an entire continent will remember it by. It's like them giving a name card to the average Western consumer and saying, hey, uh, I'm Oppo, I do crazy things, I'm really innovative, and I charge a lot of money for my devices. Nice to meet you. And here's the thing, I think deep down, Oppo still just wants to sell Western consumers either generic mid-range phones like they do in Asia or just less crazy flagship phones because they've proven that that's a good business. But they actually want to charge premium prices for those, just like they do in Asia. And in order to justify those prices, similar ones to those of Samsung and Apple, they first have to prove themselves as a premium company. And that's what the Find X does. And look, I know that many tech enthusiasts aren't big fans of Oppo because they think their devices are overpriced. But here's the thing, I think Oppo doesn't really care because Oppo at its core isn't a brand for enthusiasts, even if every now and then they release a phone like the Find X. 
Opal, in my opinion, is a brand for people who like fashion, who like designer bags or expensive cars. There's a reason why there's a Lamborghini logo on the back of one of the more expensive models. And I think with the Find X, Opal has once again proven that they are incredibly good at reaching this audience. Okay, so that's basically my theory on the Opal Find X. There is a Twitter poll in the description below, so go there and let me know what you think about the strategy. While you're at it, be sure to follow me on my social media channels because that's where I hang out. Uh, be sure to binge watch my previous episodes because they're all still relevant. And also be sure to subscribe for future ones because I have uh, something very exciting coming up. So I gotta go and edit that right now. All right, see you in the next one.